everybody. Oh yeah, welcome back to another hot episode of a very special podcast. This is the podcast where you talk about all your favorite TV series from yesteryear and discuss it over a glass of wine. I'm your boy, Patrick M. Dunn, and I'm joined here, as always, by my Colorado queen, Kat Halstead, the famed author. Welcome back, girl. Welcome back. Well, thank you. That was a nice intro. Yeah. What's it like to be a famed author? I, 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 I'm I not used to this title. Oh, well, oh, hold on. I have a question for you. We know that you wrote The Spirit Board. Mm-hmm. We know that you wrote, not I'll Be Gone in the Dark, but something about in the dark. Alone Inside the Night? Alone in the Night. Alone Inside the Night. Sorry. Sorry. And Perfect Imperfections. Do you have anything new in the pipeline? Anything new coming up? Anything we should know about? I have two things that I'm working on. Okay. All right. I, I'm working on them, but I don't have, like, official titles. Okay, because I keep calling you so. the author, and I'm like, this bitch hasn't dropped a book in, like, two years. So I was like, what the fuck? It has just been over a year. So, whatever. Come on, you gotta churn them out like V.C. Andrews or, or fucking... Uh, uh, who's the girl who wrote uh, Sweet Valley High? Francine Pascal. Yeah, Francine Pascal. Really written by Kate Williams. Yeah, she that bitch drops books, like, every fucking 20 minutes. You know what? At the time it took us to do this intro, she just dropped a book. So you need to get on it, girl. You need to get on it right now. Listen, it's election season. This bitch is busy. Yeah, Kat's uh, busy in her uh, call center job doing political surveys, like finding out, like, is Kamala, mm-hmm. what's her name, hot or not? Is, is those the questions you ask? <laughs> <laughs> do you approve or disapprove Kamala Harris as a vice presidential candidate? Do you approve or disapprove of Joe Biden? That's it. That's the questions you ask. That's it. That's like the kind of questions. Yeah. Okay. So the kind of questions we ask will be like, do you approve or disapprove of Donald Trump as president? Does that strongly approve or strongly disapprove? You know, I'm wildly disappointed. Wildly disappointed. I thought you'd be like, uh, what did you think of Obama in jeans type questions? I kid you not. Okay. Remember? Okay. This is almost three years ago. When there was the Golden Globes and people were like, Oprah should run for president. I literally, like, not the next day, but the day after that, went to work and had a survey that asked, would you vote for Oprah as president of the United States? I don't know. It depends on, like, what the survey is about, what the questions are. Like, you will find, basically, the do you approve or disapprove Donald Trump question in almost any political survey though all right i I mean just go on twitter just do one of those like yes no questions (laughs) well it's so funny i've been um looking at tweets about polling and people will say oh yeah i got that call i told them i was voting for biden (laughs) but i'm really voting for trump so well by the time this episode drops it's probably gonna be like the night before election day so who knows oh yeah oh yeah this is a timely episode the death days we are in the middle of the death days happy death day everybody's getting a little crazy where i work so uh we just wrapped up halloween Halloween is over. We put away our costumes. We put away like our, <laughs> like that temporary spray can hair dye. We put away our like little whiskers. <laughs> and we're here for a palate cleanser. We were just going to, you know, wipe the slate clean yes. for another year of the pod. And uh, hold on. <laughs> we always come back with a dream sequence, a slash fantasy sequence episode. What are we, what are we hitting you in the face with today? What are we going to slap across your face? Yes. Slap across your forehead tonight. Today, we are going to take a 1990s teenager and drop him in 1957 Cold War era. Ooh, yeah. It's like matinee starred John Goodman, but mm-hmm. not, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing... A Michael Jacobs staple, a Cat Halstead staple, a Patrick M. Dunn staple. What are we doing? We're doing Boy Meets World. Oh, yeah. We've done this like a bunch of times, right? We've, we kind of dip in this well. Mm-hmm. This is our fourth? Third time, I believe. Eh. Fourth time, maybe. Uh, uh, you know what? Who's keeping score? Heather, are you keeping score? Uh, Heather's probably the only one who knows. Like, Send us a tweet with like a check mark, like three, four, how, however many checks. I mean, to be fair, we have done like pretty much all the major Michael Jacobs shows. That is true. I mean, we did Charles in Charge. We haven't done the Torkelsons, though. That's true. We haven't done that yet. We're working up to it. We're working up to it. That's going to be our 250th episode spectacular. <laughs> putting it out, out there right now putting on the vision board that's a long ways away putting on the 2023 vision board when we're i don't know we're floating in space because there's no more earth <laughs> maybe who knows <laughs> 
Oh. The virus destroyed it all. Oh, hold on. Can we talk about how I'm recording from a new space? My, new, my hot new space? Oh, uh, yes. Patrick has a new space. Yeah, I'm out of the closet now. Now I'm into my zen den. I got green walls. I got, like, the global hemisphere behind me. Do you realize what you just said? Good times. Good times in 2020. Oh, my goodness. All right. So before we get into the hot night of uh, Boy Meets World, before he goes back in time to 1957 to watch the Sputnik spy satellite launch, mm -hmm. you want to go back to the day, the original day that this episode aired. Do you know the hot air date? Do you know the hot air date? I'm going to say it was April 26, 19... 95. Oh, you're off one year. 1996, girl. Oh. 1996, what the fuck? Dang. Damn, where was your cat math? Hashtag cat math. That was cat math. All right, so where were we? Oh, yeah, no. Where were we in 1996? What was going on? What was going on in... um? 1996, we are in eighth grade. All right, all right. So um, I'm super into The Simpsons. So Patrick is apparently in high school, and I'm still in middle school. Oh, yeah. I'm in like the weird Boy Meets World type um, scenario where eighth grade is high school. So that's where I am. I was probably into skateboarding. I probably uh, had wore a lot of flannel this year. I was really into the band Rancid. Oh, I had that like that long like Kurt Cobain ish type of hair. I bleed I hydrogen peroxide in it. Oh my god, we are not friends yet. No, we're like we have not even heard of Sunset Beach yet. We're one year away, one year away from the mm -hmm. fateful day, fateful day that Dorothy from Kansas strolled into <laughs> Sunset Beach, bought a plane ticket, <laughs> <laughs> looking for SB with her fucking wedding day money <laughs> that she stole from all her friends. Yeah, Did she ever pay that back? I don't know. Let's find out. No, let's ask her. Susan Ward, where are you? Oh, my God. So where are you? We know where I am. We know where I am. Where are you? Where are you in 1996? It's April, 8th grade, maybe after school, went into town with my friends. When you say into town, you mean New York City? Like the hut, NYC? No, I mean, we mean like in town, it means like we went into the downtown. Oh, of like of the shitty town you lived in. The awesome town I lived in, but yeah. Well, you probably lived in like the Charlton Chowch town, right? Is that where you lived? Kind of. You figure that out? Kind of. Or maybe there was a dance this night. I don't remember. We could, It could have been a, a Friday night dance, so. Probably the night that, uh, Coolio, Gangsta's Paradise is playing when all the boys walked in at the same time. Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say. Probably like if there was a dance that night, first song, it's Coolio's Gangsta's Paradise. Oh, yeah. Hot song. Hot song. Because that was always the first song. Hold on. 1996 school dance related question. Okay. Did you guys get like hot 70s jams like uh, Stairway to Heaven playing at your school dances? I don't believe so. I feel like that's a staple in my town. Um. Okay. So... We always, always had the electric slide. Ooh, I mean, obviously. I mean, who fucking did it? Yeah. <laughs> let's be real. Let's be real. Um, and of course, at this point, we also had the Macarena. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is like hot, hot off this fucking press right now. Um, if you weren't doing the Macarena, like, you know what? You might as well just fucking go away. Like, <laughs> go away, Satan. No, I remember I taught Axed in the Macarena a couple years ago. You know what? I'm going to throw this out there. I have forgotten how to do it. And I tried to do it improv one night and I was like, couldn't remember like where to put my hands. <laughs> Feel terribly. I can just, I can do it without even like thinking. Make a video for the YouTube. Cat all said doing the Macarena in front of her like cereal monster posters. <laughs> hey, it is a puzzle. Well, you know what? I'll work on my uh, Fruit Loops poster this uh, puzzle this weekend because I ha totally have one. Um. Okay. So we had, yeah. we also, okay. I remember we always had Tell Me More from Grease playing. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Like there, like I remember eventually the DJ, because it was always the same DJ for every single dance from like every single event since grade school that needed music because like if we had like jump rope for the heart or whatever what <laughs> any of that stuff where you had like a dj it was the same dj uh, like bikini car wash maybe <laughs> like who knows no <laughs> Like we it was like it was the same DJ, so it was like the same stuff. He eventually got like a video screen, a projector. The same guy that did the DJ in my school system also did like the local weddings. So I mean, I get it. Yeah, I'm sure he did like the local weddings too. It's like Friday night he's got the middle school dance. Saturday he's either got Caparelli wedding and or the Lowenstein bar mitzvah or something. Oh yes. Shout out, shout out to the Lowenstein Bar Mitzvah. You know. What a night, what a night. I will just say, before we go any further, 
I went out the other night on Yom Kippur to a hot Jewish bar, and oh, it was exciting. There was like dancing and all kinds of crazy music. It was great. I loved it. There is a lot to unpack in that statement. If you ever get a chance to go out on Yom Kippur, totally do it. Okay, hold on. Worth it. A Jewish bar? Yeah, we have one. I, okay. I, I just wouldn't even think like, oh, hey, this bar is the Jewish bar. Is it next to the synagogue? No, it's not. It's not. All right. So it's one of my friend's birthdays and one of our mutual friends is Jewish and he is friends with the owner. So he like linked up like a hut, like hut night, hut dinner night there. But it just happened to be the same as Yom Kippur. Mm -hmm. So after 10 o'clock, it turned into like, like a Yom Kippur party, but it was like hot, like top 40 Mm -hmm. music from Israel. And it was great. I loved it. It was a good time. Wow. Okay. They didn't play that um, Usher Little John song, though, like to get us going. So it worked. <laughs> it worked. Yeah. <laughs> do, do. Oh, my God. All right. So I think we've babbled on enough. I mean, I'm sure you guys are fucking sick of us already. But uh, do you want to just like paint the picture of that night? What was happening that night on television? Because, you know. Yeah, what was happening that night on television? It's a Friday. TGIF, April 26, 1996. This is, I'm looking at the, um. it's a... You know what? This is actually a pretty good night of television. I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. This is a hot night. I I know what I was watching, and I know what I taped. And I think I was home this night because I remember watching this episode of a very specific show that was on tonight. We'll get to it shortly. We'll get to it shortly. But uh, um, you want to start off with ABC, the alphabet, see what uh, boys at ABC are up to? What was our TGIF lineup for this night? This is like the classic TGIF lineup. So we get Family Matters. Boy Meets World, Step by Step, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper is like the only wild card tonight. It's not really a wild card, though. How long was Hanging with Mr. Cooper on TGF? Like, maybe one or two seasons? Um, I would say all but its final season. Okay, so do you think this was its final season, then, of no. Cooper? I think we got, like, another year of Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Like, I think the next season is its final season. You're right. I, cause I feel like I was, like, a freshman, and, like, I was like, this show is fucking still on. Yeah. And then following the TJF block, we get our classic. We probably got, like, a hot, like, John Stossel report on 2020, Hugh Dowds, Barbara Walters, whatever was going on in the world. It's 1996. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe like they had a report on Waco, the Waco disaster from four years prior. I don't know. Like, what are we talking about now? Oh, I don't even know. Like 1996, maybe a follow up on the kid who got caned in Singapore. Uh, but that was like 1992. Uh, you know what? We're, we're like coming to the Olympic. I think is this an Olympic year? This is like building up to the Olympics. So like we're not there yet. The Olympics were a few months after this. All right. So maybe. Maybe whoever was like the hot Michael Phelps y type guy in nineteen ninety six that like we were getting like a spotlight on him for my gal Babs. You ready for CBS? CBS is actually like a pretty like okay night. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. All right. CBS in nineteen ninety six, I'm not sure I believe it, but okay. Alright, things kick off at eight o'clock with a show. We've talked about this before. I've brought it up a few times. Um, do you know Do South? It's the one with the Mountie, right? Yes. All right. So this is like a Canadian American TV series. It was like a partnership between like NBC and like, or I'm sorry, CBS and whatever, like the Canadian CBC, CBC. So it's about this guy. He's like the Dudley do right <laughs> of his town, but his dad is murdered in like in Chicago so he like asks to be like transferred to Chicago and he like goes to Chicago to like solve the like the murder mystery of his dad. And I don't know if he ever solves it or not, but I I, I totally remember this. I remember seeing Epps. Um I kind of remember it being like a quirky, um, like northern exposure slash twin peaksy type show, like a cr- like a hybrid of those two. If that's such a thing that exists. I want to find an episode of that and just prove you wrong. It it kind of has like a comedy vibe to it, but it also had, like, I mean, like Twin Peaks had kind of like a quirky vibe to it too. Yeah. But it was kind of like serious, but like jokey at the same time. Yeah. I'd love to find episodes. I don't know if they exist anywhere. I feel like this is a show that's just like lost the time. You know what? I think I was at a store like the other week and saw this on DVD. For real? You didn't buy it? I didn't. I'll go if I go there on Friday after I get my paycheck. I'll see if I can find it. No, no, we need to stop the podcast right now. You need to go out there, buy this before someone picks it up. There's gonna be like some like sixty year old bra that's like, oh, I remember this show, <laughs> and it's gonna be all your fault. Like I remember the commercials for it. That's what I remember. Like you'd see a commercial during like 
as the world turns or something. I also remember the TV guide ads. I remember mm-hmm. like the pit, like the close, the black and white close up of the Mountie hat. Yeah. And like he was looking down so you didn't see his face, but I don't know. I, I've totally seen apps. I've totally seen apps and we'll find it. We'll do it in a future episode. Maybe episode like Leslie Nielsen was on this. Yeah. Yeah, he was. You know what? I think I've seen that episode to be honest with you too. Like I'm looking, Dean McDermott was in this. Tori Spelling's husband. They're still married, right? Yeah, they're still married. I think they're still together. They have like 11 kids now. I lost count at some point when it was like they were on their fourth reality show. And I was like, I don't know what's happening. James Vanderbeek and Tori Spelling are just pumping out kids. Not together, but like separately. So in like 15 years, we're going to get like a hot CW drama of like, it's going to be like the Vander Spellings. Oh my God. Looking forward to it. All right. You ready for uh, CBS 9 o'clock? This is a hot, this is a hot hour. Yeah, it was fun. All right. We get an hour of our boy, Dick Van Dyke, is d- in diagnosis murder. He's a medical examiner. He's solving crimes. Okay, okay. He's um, really into, like, computer graphics. Wasn't that, like, Dick Van Dyke's, like, um, 90s hobby? Yeah. Computer graphics? Yeah. Dick Van Dyke was all about the uh, 90, in the 90s, about doing, like, the computer graphics and stuff. Yeah, he was, like, super into it. So, yeah. I feel like there's a computer game. I feel like there's a diagnosis murder computer game. And if there isn't, there should be. I think there is. There has to be. I feel like I've played it before. I feel like, you know, when I was, like, 17 years old, up late one night playing it, <laughs> just trying to fucking, trying to, like, open up the medical examiner's bag. It's one of those, like, point-and-click games. You know those, like, point-and-click games? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. You ready for uh, CBS 10 o'clock? This is a fucking good hour. This is a hot hour. Yeah, what was on at 10 o'clock? Any guesses? Any hot guesses? I feel like you know this. I feel like you should get this. We talked about it literally like four times, I think, in the history of the podcast. I want to say Nash Bridges. You got it, girl. You got it. Nash Bridges. I think this is the first season of Nash Bridges, but I might be wrong. I I don't really know like the chronology of Nash Bridges, but did you watch the show? Were you like a Nash Bridger? No. Not at all. Oh, I used to love this fucking show. It was great. It had Cheech Marin in it. Kelly Hugh was in it for like the second season. Oh, it was great. I think, uh, it, and then it spun off that um, that martial law show after. Oh, so great. I wish it, I, I wish it was like around, but it's not. All right, but you ready? Um, You can watch it on CBS All Access. Oh, fuck. You know what? I know where Patrick's going. <laughs> 225th episode spectacular is going to be. <laughs> it's going to be Natch Bridges. All right. You ready for a hot night at Fox? This is 100%. This is what I was watching tonight. Yeah, what was on Fox? Uh, things started off at 8 o'clock with Sliders. Oh, yeah. Uh, this was the series that starred Jerry O'Connell. Okay. He, like, like hopped from, like, alternate reality to alternate reality, but he got, like, lost in it, and he couldn't find his way back. It was such a great show. I think this was the final year it was on Fox, and then it got switched over to this sci-fi network, where it, like, creepily was on until, like, 1999-ish. Yeah, that was, like, a show that just, like kept going oh yeah i don't know its final air date is february 4th 2000 i feel like jerry o'connell had some like hot goss on like somebody (laughs) he had like a compromised video of somebody like on that show and he's like you know what i'll release this to the world he's got kill switch engage going on (laughs) any hot guesses on what was on at nine o'clock on a friday night in 1996 on fox you have to know this no not at all all right this is a show that you have never watched but it was Super important to me. The X-Files. I specifically remember this episode, Avatar. This is the episode where um, assistant director Skinner is uh, accused of murder. And they have to, like, prove that he didn't do the murder. So I remember this night. This was, like, boiling to the end of the season. So, like, we're getting to the very end. and mm-hmm. I don't know. Good times. Good times. But hold on. Are you ready for a hot night at NBC at the Peacock? I cannot even fathom. Who was on the Peacock. I did not know this show was ever on a Friday night. Eight o'clock for a whole hour. Unsolved Mysteries. Ooh, okay. Did you know? Did you know this was like a, like relegated to a Friday night slot at one point? No wonder I couldn't find it for a while. I feel like this is like a Tuesday, Wednesday night kind of thing. And then it's like 1996. Yeah, like I remember I would watch, I remember watching like Unsolved Mysteries and then I'd watch like Law and Order. Maybe it was a rerun or a special. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe it could, it could have been a rerun or like. Oh, well, this show got pulled, so we're just going to toss on Unsolved Mysteries. That is true. That is true. All right. At 9 o'clock, this is weird. Because this is still, like, peak Unsolved Mysteries time. This is. And you know what? The uh, NBC 9 o'clock slot is pretty weird, too. I was like, what the fuck? Uh, Dateline, Friday at 9 o'clock. I mean, that's a staple now. I mean, it is, but... 
Like it's usually like a ten o'clock slot, right? Like it's like usually like ushered off to the late night crowd. Um, I feel like I think Dateline starts kind of early now. It, it depends on if it's like a two two hour episode. Uh, well, it wasn't tonight. It wasn't because at ten o'clock. Yeah. Any huck asses? Any huck asses? This is a show we've talked about. We've never done it, but it's tied in. It's tied in with a bunch of other series in the NBC universe and even the X Files universe. It has like a footing in the X Files universe too. Because one character, just one measly little character, just happened to appear as a main character in another show, and the whole universe just, like, jizzed everywhere. I, I can't. Oh. Big, my brain is not... I'm gonna kick myself, aren't I? You are. Homicide life on the streets. Oh, munch! Munch! Oh. Oh. You know what? I told you I was gonna kick myself. I know. We need to track down a good Homicide Life on the Streets episode, because this was the fucking show. This was, like, this was better than NYPD Blue. I know NYPD Blue, but you got to see butts. This show didn't show butts, but it showed a lot more. A lot more um, like, grisly murders. I don't think I actually ever watched Homicide Life on the Street unless it was crossing over with, like, Law & Order. Really? Yeah. Fuck, this is like, this was show was the fucking jam. This was, like, really, you know what? I can't even talk about how great this show was. I can't, but I can't at the same time. <laughs> but you know what I mean. You know, you know what? Yeah. I'll... I'm going to go through the archives. I'm going to go through the archives. I'm going to find you like the definitive episode. You get to see Andre Brower pre Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Mm. Detective Munch is in it. Oh, so many greats. You know what? Like the first episode of the show, the first episode of Homicide is a fucking great episode. I remember the pilot. I remember the pilot being strong, monumental, impactful. We'll find it. We'll find it. You know what? I'll, I'll mail you the DVD. We'll do a mail drop. <laughs> so that's at night of television on a scale, on a scale of one out of five Dateline episodes relegated to nine o'clock. It's just an average night, I feel like. Really? Yeah, there's nothing. So? I feel like this is like a hot night. It's like a, this is a good Friday. You're not going to get a Friday like this anymore. I mean, true. But for 90, for the 90s, this is kind of an average Friday. All right. Whatever. Whatever the fuck you think. You don't have any Nostradamus specials. You don't have anything like wild and crazy. I mean, we could have got a Nostradamus special on Dateline. Where the fuck do we know? We don't know like what the deets were. The, or 2020. Or 20 true. True. It could have been like, here, here's Nostradamus predicting that two brothers will fight and fall. I, I, yeah, I feel like between 1992 and like 1997-ish, we got a lot of Nostradamus specials on a Friday night. <laughs> it was like, you know, I knew more about that motherfucker yeah. than like my own family member. I know, right? I do, for real. I just remember there was like always something and I always watched it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why? Why was I watching that stuff? Why was like a teenage cat watching this? Because you know what? It was like it was scary, but it was exciting and you wanted to know more. And then like as the internet started to catch on, you would read things that would like contradict what you had read like, or what you saw in those like TV specials. Yeah. So you're like confused. You're like, is the world going to end on May 5th, 2000? I don't know. Let's, you know what? I'm just gonna hope for the best. Hope for the best. Let's just hope I get to have my high school graduation. I know, and I did. Unless this is a lost scenario. Unless this is a lost scenario. <laughs> We're all in the church right now. Oh my goodness. You want to get into this whole episode of Boy Meets World? Um, yeah, let's get into it. I was a teenage spy, I believe is the name of the episode, right? Yes. This is an exciting episode. You know what? I think every time we do Boy Meets World, it gets like a little bit more exciting. Do you think? I mean, you okay? Boy Meets World is one of my absolute favorite TV shows. I can just like put it on and watch it, and it's all cool, you know. And I think we're going through it like a really like cool order. We're kind of like bouncing. We're in, like the early years, we're in the later years, we're yeah. like in the middle, from the very beginning. So I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. Like I literally thought this was. This episode was later than it actually was. I was surprised. Yeah, you told me it was season three, episode 19. And I was like, what the fuck? I thought this was like a season like 11. Yeah, I was like searching through season four. Because right. like I knew like Topanga and Sean were in it. But I forgot that Mr. Turner was in it and there was no Jack. So. Oh, yeah. Mr. Turner. I have to take that all into consideration. So I was a teenage spy. The basic premise of the episode is... Corey is kind of going, he's kind of in like a transitional period with Topanga and Sean right now. It's kind of like things are awkward. Things are weird. Try to find the balance between girlfriend and best friend. Because they were friends first, and then they were 
dating and now they're friends again but Corey kind of wants more but Topanga's like eh yeah yeah and like Sean's just kind of like caught in the middle but I don't know, but he's dumb. But it's not as bad as it gets when they're actually together and then they break up. Yes. Later on. All right. I, I always have a hard time coming into Boy Meets Frog, so I'm like trying to remember like where in the legacy we are. So this is like the very first time that Curry and Topanga broke up. This is like the first end all be all of their relationship was. Yeah, I think this is like the first time they like broke up. They're not together. We're in a weird place where, you know... Uh, Corey is actually like doing his homework now, unlike early on where he was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like he's told just like whatever. Eric is still in high school. Um, we've got the new Morgan. Yeah, shout out to New Morgan. Um, friend of the show. You know, we have not dove too deep into Sean's family history, so we don't know that there's another brother that's gonna just show up and live with him, become best friends with Eric. You know, we're in a nice like easy place really like Corey is trying to do his homework and there's some kind of like electrical glitch with the microwave where if you plug it in it like shorts out other stuff in the house like Corey's computer yeah i was like thinking about this so I- i'm assuming that the microwave has always been there mm-hmm. it's always been plugged in that outlet and like i'm guessing right above the kitchen is Corey's bedroom and maybe it shares the same fuse as the microwave circuit and you know a computer is kind of a new thing so like Corey like plugs in the computer it's is it a laptop he has a laptop is what i'm guessing i'm Okay, it is 1996. I'm going to guess it's a desktop. I am too, but later on in this episode, he has a laptop. So I was like, whoa, that's... Oh, that's right. It's like a fancy laptop. That's right. I forgot. I know, and I was like, that's pretty fucking bold for 1996. I'm like, that's probably like a $3,000 laptop right there. Yeah. So who knows? And I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God, that thing is so thick. Like, holy crap. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Corey. And then I, like, pick up my laptop right now, and it maybe weighs three pounds, maybe. And, yeah, if you think about it, if you think about it, our telephones, our cell phones probably have more memory and RAM and yada, yada, yada than that laptop. Yeah, because there's a, um, so basically what was happening, uh, Corey was, like, typing up his 10-page paper on the Sputnik satellite that was launched into space by the Russians in 1957. Okay. And... Why the hell would you need a 10-page paper on Sputnik? Uh, I mean, obviously, I could have... Th- like, the Wikipedia page, if you printed it out, it would probably be, like, one page. <laughs> let's be real. Let's be real. Yeah, like... This was the time... I'm like, how... You gotta, you gotta think back. Ugh. This was the time before, like, autosave existed. Yeah. So I remember actually, like, sitting down, like, writing papers, and then, like, you forgot to hit, like, control S. Yeah. And, I don't know, like, you something crashed. Like, Microsoft Word crashed on you. And you're like, what the fuck? I just lost, like... Three hours. You get the blue screen of death. Yeah, exactly. There goes my Sunset Beach fan fiction. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to write it all over again. I don't know if I can rewrite that sex scene between Annie and Ben. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but there was just... Do you used to remember that time, though, where now you have, like, Google Docs and you can write... You literally just, like, hit the letter A and it saves it automatically. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I can record this podcast and have... My recording software crashed. I would have it all saved. I'm not worried about it. But this is just an ancient time. Oh, see, my half would be gone. You think? Like, I feel like if you're... I think... No, if it crashes, it, it's like it's saving every, like, few minutes. I don't think Audacity is. I, I don't know. Maybe it's a Mac thing. Maybe it's a Mac thing. I don't know. I, I feel like but, um, Mac is always saving things. Well, like, earlier today, I went in to work, and what I was doing was actually a lot of data entry for HR. And um, I would do, i get like one part in and I, of course, hit control S. Look at you. Save it. Look at you. Save it. Save it. Save it. Save it. Because I don't trust the computer system at work sometimes. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what wonky systems exist in the actual workplace? But I mean, I feel Corey's pain. I mean, to be fair, these computers are from like when we were in like college running Windows 10 now. So it's like. I'm, I'm going to throw this out there. I'm going to throw this out there. They're a little scary at times. Senior year of high school, 
This is still floppy disk era. We used to like take a fucking three inch disk and like stick it in your slot. Yeah. And I remember we had to do like a, we had a project. We had to write. It was kind of like a journal esque type thing, like a live journal, but mm-hmm. printed it out and like put it in a binder. And I I wrote the whole thing. I had to like save it on my computer. I like printed it out. And then like the I don't know like through the year like you're supposed to like submit it to the to your English teacher and she was gonna grade it. She was gonna read red market and then she'd be like just go in and make the corrections that i suggested because you're gonna appreciate this like later on when you're like 38 years old and you find this <laughs> and i'm like okay all right but guess what i saved it on my hard drive i had like a hard drive glitch that got all fucked up i didn't save it to a floppy disk i had to like rewrite it like by hand it take me that long but i'm like but guess what I didn't save it. I don't care. I don't care about it. Okay, I think I still have a pile of floppy disks. 30 year old me does not care. high school and college. I can't access any of that information on them now because I don't have a floppy disk drive. I know. Like, you're going to have to go to like archive.com. <laughs> like, see if you can. Uh, .org. Like, I remember. Not even .com, .org. I remember I had a floppy disk just full of pictures from the Titanic website. Like the movie? Titanic or like the actual Titanic? Like the movie Titanic. Because I was a 16 year old girl when that movie came out. That's what we did. Well, you know what? If you want to preserve the internet, go to the Space Jam website because it still looks exactly the same. <laughs> so back to Boy Meets World. Back to our boys and girls. So Corey's got this super nice laptop in 1996 that could probably not handle any of the stuff a laptop handles today. He's got to write a 10 page paper and uh, he goes downstairs. He's like, oh, what happened? Where He's like having a freak out. I, I want to comment down to the sweater that he's wearing too. It's fucking like, it's, it's a timeless sweater, me thinks. It's something that mm-hmm. someone could wear in 1950, then someone could wear in 1996 or today. Because I was like, it is. you know what? I'm average. I can wear that sweater today, methinks. If Topanga would let Corey, he would probably still wear that sweater today. Uh, yeah, but you know, you know Topanga. Yeah. All right, so what does Corey do? What does our boy Corey do? He's like telling his parents, he's like, you guys had it so, it was so much easier. But he was like, you don't know how hard it is for me today. He's just having that like classic teenager freak out about how stressful everything is. And his parents are like, oh yeah, okay. Sure, Corey, whatever you say. Because he's doing a paper on the Sputnik. His parents kind of remember, like, the events of the Sputnik. They were probably young at that point. Yeah. And they're like, oh, yeah, like, I remember the time we thought, you know, there were spying in the U.S. and blah, 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 blah. I mean, we just have to point out we were young then. We we were in high school in the 70s. So, like, don't Mm -hmm. pinpoint me being in high school in the 50s. And he was like, okay, all right. I mean, to be fair... His parents did, had to have gotten married, like, right after high school. Probably, yeah. I feel like just with the timeline of Corey and Topanga's parents that I've seen throughout both shows, they definitely got married, like, right... They were definitely married young. Yeah, plus Eric, he graduated this year. Yeah, yeah, he graduates this year. So he would have been born in 1978, mm-hmm. is my guess. So his parents probably got married in 77. So how do you think... The parents are. I mean, <laughs> clearly they're younger than us, but they look older than us. I mean, I was going to say, again, they are younger than us and holy crap. The dad in this would pass for like 48 today. <laughs> but he was probably like, the actor was probably like 38. Let's be real. He probably was like. Yeah. And can I just bring up that he was a grocer? Like his job was a grocer. Like that was a viable job. Right around our age, our actual ages. Enabled you to own a house in 1996? Yeah, like, okay, think about it. He probably started working at the grocery store as a teenager, worked his way up. They got a union, so there's some decent benefits decent pay i forgot about unions shout out to unions i've never had a union job so i don't really know but uh i mean they look out for each other they're there for you they're here for you mm-hmm. I'm, like is he the manager of the store is he like the general manager yeah he's the manager he's like the general manager of the grocery store okay so he he makes like a decent amount of money he probably makes like 40k yeah what does um mm-hmm. what does mrs matthews do like what is her hot job i i want to say she works for an art gallery <laughs> it's the 90s that's what like moms who were like in between staying at home and getting jobs did all right on tv shows so was she like buffy's mom and like owned the art gallery or is she like no i think she's just like probably that person who like covered like two or three days a week or something all right so like the owner wants a night off mm-hmm. and she just kind of like shows up and she like kind of knows about the shit on the wall 
but maybe not. You know what? If you have like important questions, write them down on this like scribble pad and I'll pass it along to the owner. It's like Amy was probably like friends with the owner of the gallery. Yeah. And it was like, oh yeah, you can come work like two days a week. That way, you know, you get a break from taking care of Morgan and Corey Ooh. and you get out of the house. And I have a hot new theory. All that stuff. I have a hot new theory. Okay. Buffy's mom and Corey's mom went to college together. They were roommates. They were roommates, but they like split apart. Like they were both into like being into art and they kind of did their own thing. Uh, Joyce obviously went off and opened up her own gallery. Amy was not as successful. She was like, all right. But she got a job, but she stayed in Philly. She stayed on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And Boy Meets World and Buffy the Vampire Slayer take place in the same universe. I mean, stranger things have happened. Yeah, it could. I mean, like, why not? Like, you know what? We don't know. We can't We can't prove or disprove it. So, Unless Michael Jacobs comes out and says to you. that Boy Meets World and Buffy the Vampire Slayer do not take place in the same universe. They do. All right. So, Michael Jacobs, uh, you have to let us know definitively. That these two shows... And I'll only believe Michael Jacobs. I won't believe Joss Whedon. We don't like him anymore? Is that the new consensus? Uh, yeah, I don't think he is somebody we're supposed to like anymore. All right, well, fuck him. Um, we don't stand him. Mm -hmm. We stand Cordelia Chase. <laughs> this podcast supports Cordelia Chase. I just watched an old movie with her in it, too. Oh, she said in a movie? Well, it was like... Oh, God. It was like an ABC family, Fox family, like, rom-com. Back in the early 2000s called See Jane Date. Oh, yeah. Holy, holy shit, you know. And it had, like, Linda Dano in it and Antonio Savannah Jr. and Cameron Matheson and um, Holly Marie Combs. Uh. Yeah, the costumes were so 2003. Like, I took a screenshot at one point because I was like, there's so much brown. Where can I see this? Where can I see this? Um, It's on Hallmark Movies now. All right. I'll download it tonight. Um, and 2003 was a very brownish time. <laughs> yeah, it was like... And it was like that awful like brown green combo, a lot of that too, and I was like, ooh. You know what? When like all these TV shows go back and like create a show that's from two thousand three, make sure you pull in like the diarrhea colors, because that's how you do it. That's how you do two thousand three. I mean, this is also I wanna say around the time like the whole like velour velour tracksuits started becoming like a thing too. Oh yeah, yeah. That was hot. That was a great time. Not gonna lie, I totally wore those. I was totally that girl. I never did. <laughs> I mean, because it was a lady thing, but I don't know. Retroactively, <laughs> who knows? Who knows what so, happened? Yeah. Uh, so Corey, Corey electrocutes himself. Yeah, he like plugs in the microwave and electrocutes himself, and he ends up with the plug of the jukebox at Slim's. Yeah. Which is like the '50s version of Chubby's. I I have a question about Slim slash Chubby's. <laughs> I mean, obviously it's like a penis thing. Okay. But if you think about it, is Slim slash Chubby's like underground? Like, is it like bottom level? Yeah. Okay. That's why the stair, like the stairs, go down. It's like one of those. That's totally like a Michael Jacobs universe thing, though. Is that like a Philly thing? Like, I I feel like it's an East Coast big city kind of thing. I mean, I I live on the East Coast. I've been to big cities, and very rarely have I ever like walked down to a place. Really? I could tell you like maybe twice in my life I've walked down to a place. Wow. Okay. Is Michael Jacobs from Jersey? Is this a Jersey thing? Like I don't know. Like Cat also the author. You tell me. <laughs> You're apparently the East Coast queen. I mean, I haven't been on the East Coast in a while, but I just remember like you'll find that place that's just like it's a retail space, but you got to walk down the steps to it. Uh, I mean, there's a breakfast place I used to go to Massachusetts that like you walk down to, but it didn't look like that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like maybe that's like the television perspective of what an East Coast um, like hotspot would be, because like, I feel like. Didn't Cheers have multi levels? Well, no, Cheers was downstairs too. <sighs> but it's uh... Cheers was like off the like the the restaurant is upstairs on the street level, and then Cheers the bar is downstairs. All right. So you had Cheers downstairs. You have Chubby's on Boy Meets World. You have Topanga's Bakery on Girl Meets World. It's down a set of steps, the little courtyard outside, and. I don't know. And I feel like wherever they hung out with on um, Zoe, Duncan, Jack, and Jane, the other Michael Jacobs show from the CW was like down down underground too. You mean the WB. You keep saying the CW. You do it all the time. W no, it was, oh uh, yeah, WB, CW. It's the same thing. It's just different letters. <laughs> Let's be real. Uh, uh, 
All right. So Corey gets like zapped back in time. He he kind of yes. He's like holding like a cord to the jukebox. And he like plugs it back in, and I don't know some fucking leader of the pack starts playing again, mm-hmm. and they're all excited. And he like the first person he sees is 1957 Depanga. Yes, there's some there's something different about her. She's like a little bit. I mean, she she's got the tight pants, the leather jacket. <laughs> And the bouffant hair. Yeah, she's got the, like, love shack hairstyle going on. Mm-hmm. You know what? She rocked it, though. I'm just going to throw this out there. Like She looked, She did. Normally, Topanga's kind of, like, she's a goody-goody, but right now she's being naughty-naughty, so it's kind of like an Aaliyah song. Okay, Topanga Lawrence is your no-nonsense flower power love child. Yeah, yeah. Like, she's half hippie, half scary corporate lawyer lady i know it's like it's hard to like topanga is a hard nut to crack i mean we're still in long hair topanga with the like mostly hippie-ish earth mother mode we are it's the next season when she chops off her hair and everything like changes okay yeah like she cut her hair and like she had like she changed her personality it's very like (laughs) felicity-esque So to say. All right. So the OG, the OG Topanga, she's kind of of the earth. Just this one single little root growing out of the ground. And that's Topanga. Mm-hmm. Yet our boy, our boy Corey goes back in time. And Cap- uh, Topanga's kind of like the opposite of that. She's kind of just this like yeah. rough edged. Probably like the kind of girl that hangs around with like a greaser. She She's basically your pink lady. To... Sean Z uh, T Bird. Corey bumps into Topanga and she's like, uh no, my name is TL. Call me TL. And she kinda looks like she's got the typical fifties hair, like beehive style thing going on. It's tall mm-hmm. and it's got the little like waves on the sides. I don't know. Corey's like, whatever, like you know what I'm into it either way. But then he bumps into his boy, his boy Sean Hunter. Who, like, normally in 1996 has that, like, curtain hairstyle. That all the girls would lose their freaking mind over when he would touch it. For real, for real. But now he's wearing the leather jacket. He's got that, like, white t-shirt on underneath. The white, tight t-shirt underneath. He's got the greaser hair. He's got, like, that one curl. The one little Clark Kent curl, like, slinging down. Yeah. And Corey sees him. He's like, oh, I'm so glad I ran into you. He's like, you're my best friend. He's like... He's like, bitch, who are you? Yeah, who the fuck are you? Are you new? Like, who is this lame kid in the sweater? You're wearing a fucking sweater. You got fucking curly hair. Like, ugh. He's like, dude, I'm your best friend. He's like, I don't have friends. I'm fucking Shanzi Hunterelli. Like, the only friend I have is TL. Oh, yeah. he Is he friends with TL, though? They're, I think they're... Okay. Imagine if you have, like... Your greaser boys and your pink lady girls, and they're all paired up except for Sean and Sean Z and TL. Uh, you know, like for whatever reason, these two don't get together because they're not into like the pressure of dating somebody in the group. Do you know what I? Do you know what I picture? I picture TL, aka Topanga, being like the girl in um, Rubble Without a Cause that like drops the um, the bow at the racetrack, mm-hmm. like between the two cars. Like, I picture her being that girl, because I feel like that girl's insecure. Yeah. And well, Tep- Topanga in 1957 is kind of insecure. I feel like they're both, like, part of, like, the bigger group, but they're kind of, like, the outcasts of the bigger group. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, they don't fit in with, like, the rest of the kids in school. They barely fit in with the greasers. Like, the greaser pink lady group is, like, where they fit in the best, but even then... Not really. Okay, yeah. The, like, it's a tough, like, web to tangle 1957 mm-hmm. Boy Meets World Town. But uh, you know what? Like, I kind of see... I kind of see a world where people people are into Shanzi, mm-hmm. but he's a hard nut to crack. They're like, you know what? Like, he's hot. He's handsome. He wears that little jacket. He wears that tight white shirt. I don't know, the tight jeans. Uh, he drives a nice car. Sometimes he drives a motorcycle. But he's kind of got that, like... As soon as you get close to him, as soon as like he starts to run up to you, he's he's like he's vulnerable, and he kind of like 
cuts away and he's like, oh, I can't do this anymore. And I, I feel like him and TL had that kind of thing going on. Like maybe they had like a will they or won't they kind of thing. Yeah. Leading up to this. Yeah. There's probably like a, oh, well, because who else would they get with? You know what I mean? Because there is no Corey in this world. In our world, in our boy beats world, Corey is kind of like the magnet that just mm-hmm. draws all these people together. But in this alternate reality, Topanga is kind of like a lost beacon. Sean's a lost beacon. And then we'll meet Eric in a second. Mm -hmm. Normally in our universe, our TGIF universe, he's like a moron. He's like a dumbass. He's into chicks. He just wants to get his dick wet all the time. But in this world, he's kind of like the nerd. Yeah. He's, he's Harvard bound. But isn't he like debating between like Harvard and Yale? He's like, I don't know where to go. Yeah. Where am I going to go? It's like, I don't know where to go. Like, which one has girls? Who wants... This one wants me to teach. Oh, I can't go there. The girls will distract me. The fake Mr. Feeney's like, oh, I mean, Harvard, you know, is an um, all-male school. You should go there. And he's like, oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, right. I'm going there, baby. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Can you imagine? So- 1957, Eric, <laughs> going to, like, Harvard. Well, what would the outcome be? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, so. I can't even. So, Corey is like plunged into this world like he's the new kid yes. he's kind of himself but he's not himself so to, in, in a way he tells people his name is brad pitt sir well actually he says brad pitt brad pitt sir sir and mr feeney but thinks he said pitt sir so they call him that <laughs> yeah i don't know like some like weird shenanigans start to happen um, well they're like he has to go to class and they have to do the um drill where they duck and cover under their desk Ugh. and i was like sitting there while i was watching this yesterday and i was just like is this gonna be us in like 20 years with the whole virus i was thinking about that all right so we had like all right 1957 duck and cover because the bomb was gonna drop on fucking miami one day blow the whole fucking country apart And, like, duck and cover was the way to survive it. And you would be totally safe if you went and hid under your desk. And I thought about that. I was watching this, and I was like, you know what? This is the new, like, it's 2020. We're, like, wearing these, like, thin paper masks. Like, we're not going to get the virus. We're not going to get the virus. But, like, 30 years, it's going to be like, no, you should have been, like, in an Iron Man suit. You should have been fucking Tony Stark (laughs) styling it. Like, strutting along Robocop. Like, it was just, like, I just started thinking about that. I was like, is that what wash your hands is going to be like? Uh, Use your hand sanitizer? It's great. I love it. I stand. I stand this whole episode. You know, this episode's kind of timely in a way, too. I'm not going to lie. It is. Like, in this weird, crazy way. Because we start getting this whole, like, duck and cover scenarios going on. And the class wants... Well, the teacher wants, Mr. Turner wants everyone to duck and cover under the desk because the flash just happened. And when the flash... Yeah, and Corey's like, what is that supposed to do? He's like, basically, um, duck and put your hands over your head. Is that going to protect you from radiation? I don't know, sonic wind? Yeah, he's kind of like making, he's, because he's coming at it from a 1996 point of view. Like, guys. Come on. Let's be real. Let's get dangerous. You know, he's like, guys, I can promise you in 40 years, none of this is going to matter. The world will be easier. And they're all kind of looking at him like, oh, okay. Smart guy. Sure. Whatever you say. They're kind of like suspicious of him because he he's kind of like chill during these drills because the Mr. Eternal's like, flash! And they all duck and cover. And mm-hmm. he just, Corey's just sitting there like with his arms crossed. He's like, I ain't fucking. Yeah. He's like, if that bomb actually dropped, we'd just be obliterated. We're not fucking Indiana Jones jumping into like a yeah. 1957 refrigerator blocking us from the radiation rays. He's just like, okay, whatever, guys. And then, um, you know, class is ended and they're all out in the hallway. And Feedy comes out and he's like, oh, I just heard on the radio that Russia launched this thing and it's a satellite and it's gonna spy on us and Corey's like no it's not guys it's just they're just doing space testing that's all they're doing he's trying to like calm everybody and everybody starts looking at him like bitch what yeah he's like it's only Sputnik motherfuckers like relax Ugh. like my parents told me all about it and their parents and they're like hey, who who I was like what who? why are you so calm no Russia's gonna like freak out and attack us and spy on us and yeah we're in the McCarthy era you know it's McCarthyism so they think do all the bad things that Russia 
you know, would do. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this episode turns into an episode of FX's The Americans. So now, Curry's like, he's being hunted. He's like, oh god, I gotta escape. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go home. It's the only place I know. So he like, runs home. Yeah, so he goes to the house. I want to say, they did a really good job about setting, like, changing stuff in the backyard to show, like, the different time. Oh, I didn't even notice. Like, what did you notice? Like, because there was, like, a charcoal grill that looked totally, like, a 50, like, it just looked different, and Ooh. it didn't look like a 90s backyard. It looked like a 50s backyard. Ooh, I'll take a second look. Second look at... And then you go into the kitchen, and the kitchen is completely different. Oh, yeah. And Morgan comes down, and she's like a 1957s girl, and they're kind of like going back and forth. She, she's dressed like Joni Cunningham. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then... In the early seasons of Happy Days. Joni's the one who disappeared, right? No, 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 no. Joni loves Chachi. No, Chuck is the one who disappeared. Sorry. Joni went on to, like, love Chachi. Come on. Sorry. Golly. Well, speaking of golly, all of a sudden, um, Corey's, like, mentions dad. Mm-hmm. And dad comes downstairs, but it's not dad. Who is it? It's Tom Bosley, a.k.a. Mr. Cunningham. And old Tom Bosley comes downstairs. And he's like, hey, I'm the dad of, I don't know, the new show that we're on now. I, You know what? I totally got an impression that Tom Bosley was like, he had no idea what show he walked into. They just called him up on like a yeah. fucking Tuesday night and it was like, hey, we're filming this show. We're doing like a weird 1950s kind of thing. Can you come down and just walk down the side of the stairs and just say a bunch of jokes? And he's like, yeah, I'm down for it. I got nothing out of that <laughs> that like related to the show. Like it got weird because that like... Anson Williams just pops in, like exactly. <laughs> there's pots, and he's like, "Don't call me." He's like, he like he's very like stirred before they even attempt to call him Potsy. Yeah, I just got like this whole premonition. Anson Williams and Tom Bosley were just. I don't know. They just got like called into the studio one day. Maybe they had, like they still had a contract with ABC. I I don't know what the fucking deal is, but they just got like roped into this. They were like, "Hey, just do this. Here's a script." Don't fucking question it. And, and they didn't. <laughs> they didn't. Because I was watching this and I was like, I don't understand this. I'm like, what is going on right now? I mean, I think they were going for like someone recognizable as a 50s icon. Icon, even though they're really 70s icons, but because Happy Days took place in the 50s. I'm going to throw this out there. Is this whole tradition of bringing in like older actors kind of retroactively playing their older characters is that like a late 80s early 90s thing i feel yeah because i feel like you didn't see it before really like yeah because we never saw like lucille ball being like lucy ricardo in 1979 or anything like that yeah as far as i know <laughs> yeah i mean I know. still do you think we could like pinpoint do you think we could pinpoint the first time that a television character came back and played like their television character in another series years later. Like, what do you think is the first instance of that? I mean, it's probably something with a with Gilligan. You know, what? we this should be a research project. This should be an AVSP research project. I feel like a Gilligan, if not Gilligan, then the Skipper. I feel like it's either. Gilligan's Island or Brady Bunch. Those are the two. Yeah, I mean, out of considering what we ourselves have experienced, like we've done shows where the kid dreams he's on the Brady Bunch. The kid. Or they dream they're on Gilligan's Island or the skipper's driving them back from the hospital after their tonsillectomy. Yeah, no one no one ever dreams they're uh, they're on Mary Tyler Moore show or anything like that. I mean, okay, maybe later, but still, yeah. But I, I feel like the late 80s in the 90s was like that first decade where it became like defined i feel like the nostalgia was there and it was like kind of fun to drop in on that kind of thing yeah because i mean television is a relatively new medium and i think the 70s was kind of i mean like people had tv in the 50s and 60s obviously but i feel like the 70s is kind of like the explosion of everything Yeah, because i can't even like i can't imagine like valerie harper having a fantasy about being on father knows best or something you know what i mean <laughs> on one day at a time like yeah 
Like it doesn't. Or Ozzy and Harriet come back into the play. I don't know. I mean, considering Ozzy and Harriet were on the air for like forever. I don't know. So I don't know. This is a project. This is a research project for us. Let's find the first. But I, I would guess that it, the first characters were either like Gilligan's Island or the Brady Bunch. Because I think it could be Gilligan's Island because that's that one episode of Elf we did. Um. Well, Cause... you know what predates that? Ben's trip home from the hospital with the skipper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. You know what? Well, let's look into it. This could be a future project. Yeah. We're going to have to look into it, yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, there's, like, this whole, like, little um, bit where he's like, oh, yeah, I never I never had a house. I never had a home. I was always at other people's homes, which is true because you never saw Potsy at home. He's like, I don't have parents. Like, what? what is my existence? Like, <laughs> I feel like maybe Potsy's parents... Potsy's parents were shown the least, I think, out of like the core three boys in the of the OG. Do you think we like entered like a Scarlet Witch, you know, type domain? Maybe, maybe. Well, one division will explain all of the fucking nonsense that we just tried to yes. talk about. All right, so how how does this episode end? Okay, so um, Corey ends up getting arrested for being a spy. I, I you know what? Hold on, hold on. I felt like the jail he went to was very, like, Mayberry-esque. Yes. Did you feel that? Yes, I got that very, like, very Barty Fife-type situation. Oh, it was so great. I loved it. So. Okay, go on. So Corey gets arrested for being a spy. And um, Alan and Amy come down, but they're really Boris and Natasha. Oh, yeah. All right. (laughs) This is where. The Russian spy. (laughs) This is where I think the show could just kind of turn into fx's the americans like out of nowhere <laughs> like i'm like wait a second you want that so badly i don't know like ha- have you ever watched fx's the americans i watched like the first episode like forever ago because i love carrie russell russell i always have but like oh yeah oh yeah what something went on and i just keep up with it fx is the americans just kind of ye- all right so me i was born in the early 80s I don't remember most of it. The only thing I do remember is just through like wacky times and pop cultural moments like Roger Rabbit and mm-hmm. other movies like Star Wars. However, as you start to get older, yeah, you start to look back at these things and you're like, oh, okay. Like I kind of remember like that going on. But however, when the FX is the Americans came out, it was just kind of like, oh, like that was a significant moment. And you kind of like look into it more and you're like, oh. There were Russians in America pretending to be spies during this time. And, like, you forget. You forget of, like, just the yeah. Red Scare, <laughs> whatever they called it. And then, and it was just, it's just wild to me. Like, it's wild to me that, like, all these people kind of just, like, forgot about that. But eight years ago, Mitt Romney is like, well, you know, we got to watch out for Russia. <laughs> and now Russia's, like, the fall, the scapegoat for the left, like, every day after time. Russia! Russia did it. Russia's interfering. So my favorite part of the Americans, character actress Margot Martinsdale. I just wish. I love Margot Martinsdale. I do too. I just wish they just like threw her this episode. If Martin Margot Martinsdale was in this episode of Bowie's World, that would have just tied it all together perfectly. However, Michael Jacobs didn't have that foresight. Yeah. Shout out to Margot Martinsdale. We love you. We love you on Bojack Horseman. We love you on the Americans. We love you on the Riches. What else is she on? The, the Millers. Meet the Millers. Oh, yeah. Meet the Millers. She's the best. Damn, CBS fucked that show over. CBS fucks every show over. Carol's second act. For real. Oh, I'm like destroyed right now. Thank you. Ah, all right. Okay, no. So uh, there, Corey's at the jail and Alan and Amy show up, but they're really Boris and Natasha. This is like... So apparently they think the bomb is dropping then. So the um, sheriff or whoever the deputy is like, stop, flash. So he opens up the jail cell and everybody like goes into the cell and Corey sneaks out while they're all ducking and covering. Uh, I mean, this is like spy 101 <laughs> like right here like oh my god and tl is there and she gives him like a chicken head so he can hide so nobody recognizes him like all right 
I was trying to think about this. So the whole town thinks that Corey is a Russian spy. Yeah. And you got Topanga and Shanzi who think they don't know him, but they kind of have like, oh, we have like a connection to him. Yeah. However, I mean, they accuse this guy of being a Russian spy. Well, let's just blindly trust him. Because he had good insight at that weird school lecture in which he just kind of like shut down the whole duck and cover thing. I mean, the whole thing is just like, there's just, it's the, Sean and Corey, and Corey and Topanga have this like, undeniable connection no matter like what alternate universe timeline they're in kind of thing does it make sense in an end of the world scenario i don't know but we also have to remember this is Corey's like electrocuted fantasy that is true because like he has to go and like electrocute himself again all right so misty miyagi pat marita is that his name yes all right pat marita comes arnold arnold slash mr miyagi slash Pat Morita comes into the show and he's like, The toy maker. He's like, we have to connect you to a microwave. You touch the microwave cord, plug it in, and you'll be catapulted back to your time. He's like, okay. And then he like takes off his karate costume and throws on his, I'm Arnold from the sandwich box, whatever it was that he works at. Arnold's sandwich box. Arnold's. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Oh my god, I uh, I can't, I can't with you. How did you ever, how? Yeah, it's all right. So, Corey, how? I didn't know it was just called Arnold's. Like, it, was there like a name after? I, I didn't know. Always been Arnold's, even when Al owned it, it was Arnold's. Well, whatever. Corey is like, wait, I can't plug in a microwave. Microwaves don't exist yet. And <laughs> that's when he gets like, yeah. in a weird uh, argument. What the fuck happens? I don't even know what happens, to be honest. I don't even, like, it was just so weird. Next thing you really know is, like, he wakes up on the family couch. They're all, like, ice in They're like, Corey, are you okay? They're all ice in his forehead. Like, you know what? Like, I just love the idea that, all right, Corey fucking Matthews plugged in a, like, old-ass microwave in 1996, got electrocuted, maybe died, and like their first thought was just like put him on the couch and just let him like rest, not like take him to the hospital or anything. I know, right? Like nobody calls nine one one. They call Sean and Topanga. Call like all the the whole front group over. Let them like put fucking those little sacks of ice on his forehead and whisper sweet nothings into his hair. Yeah, like come on. So like, you know, what? let's take this motherfucker to the hospital. Let's make, you know, if you, was he breathing? Like, what was the whole fucking? He got electrocuted. You guys didn't call 911. And then they do not like, later that day, he goes back to like working on the laptop and he has to like go plug it in. And they're afraid he gets electrocuted again. And like, nobody has thought to call a fucking electrician at this point. I gotta rewrite my fucking paper, my 10 page paper on the Sputnik, because you motherfuckers couldn't hire electricians. You're like, you couldn't buy me a fucking surge protector. You buy me a $3,000 laptop, but we couldn't throw in the extra 40 bucks for a surge protector. Yeah, right. Oh, it just like rewire the house. I don't fucking know like what the deal is. Something stupid happens that Eric plugs the laptop in because he's got like one sentence left to write. And then, I don't know, like, Topanga's like, oh, you gotta like save it. Corey does, you mean. He goes like, oh, I, you know what? I should plug it in. I should plug it in before I hit save. Yeah. A lot less seconds to hit save to plug it in. So, fuck you. It really does. He plugs in, he gets shocked again, and all of a sudden, Mr. Feeney comes in. He's like Captain Picard or something from the Star Trek Enterprise. He, like, just phases in like he was beamed down by Scotty. And he's like, oh, we're calling you, we're calling you up above, we need you to go to the planet fucking Zartan. Save the world, save the cheerleader, save the world, come with me. And he's like, oh, I'm coming with you. And they, like, phase up. Yeah. Did it happen? Did this really happen? Did it not? Like, who knows? Because the Michael Jacobs universe is a hard fucking shell to crack. I mean, to be fair, in the Michael Jacobs universe, Charles could get hit in the head and become Chaz for an episode and then get hit in the head at the end of the episode and be back to being Charles. I, I, I mean, is that just... Is this the same scenario? And that, like, happened in multiple episodes. And, I mean, dinosaurs took place, so it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to, like, figure this all out. All right, so, hold on. Yeah. Let's answer the question. On a scale 
on a hot scale of one out of five, one out of five floppy disks. How many floppy disks would you give this episode? Four. Okay. You know what? I'm surprised because I'm going to give this a three. (laughs) I mean, it was fun for a minute. And then I was like, eh, I'm over it. I'm over it. But I don't know. Explain your four. Explain your four. Um... I think I have such a soft spot for Boy Meets World, though. And I get it. I get it. I mean, it's 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 a sweet show. It's fun. Michael Jacobs is a sweet guy. Yeah. There's all these, like, connections. <sighs> I mean, however, this episode was just so, like, middle ground to me. I mean, this is also the first of, like, the fantasy episodes on Boy Meets World. Oh, okay. Is this the first one? So, because like, there's also one where... Corey ends up during the 40s, I think. What? <laughs> yeah. Like, the next season, there's one. All right. Well, maybe I'll see it again. And then there's one in the last season where Topanga crawls through, like, this, like, crawl space in their apartment and ends up in, like, a 1930s film noir. Uh, are you sure you're not talking about Felicity's final season? I am 100% <laughs> talking about Boy Meets World. Oh, I love it. All right. Show is wild. It's fun. It's meaningful. It's so much better than Girl Meets World. Sorry, Cat. I mean, Girl Meets World holds a different place of my heart. That is true. I mean, I'm gonna throw it out there. I didn't hate it when we watched it. Maybe we'll have to do one real soon just to kind of like crack that. I was actually thinking about you the other night because I was rewatching an episode of Girl Meets World, and it's the one where they go to school without their shoes on, and I just could hear you in my head yelling, why don't they have shoes on? Why don't they have shoes on? Because I just was, like, putting on something, like, kind of, like, chill for while I was trying to clean the house, because, you know, well, I'm, I'm like, would I watch this cleaning? Apparently, I have trouble deciding. You know what? If you want to clean the house and watch something, watch The Invisible Woman. I mean, sorry, The Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to skip out on known Scientologists for a while. I mean, I don't appreciate that she's a Scientologist, but I did love that movie. I did love that movie. Hold on. Lots. This is the first movie that had a lot of plot twists that I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Put that in your pipe and bubble it because it's a it's a soap pipe. (laughs) Oh, my God. Do they even make those anymore? I wish. I wish. All right. Oh, my God. Did, could you ever do it without getting, like, a mouthful of soap? Probably not. Probably not. Because you're going to, like, suck it in. It's going to be weird. I, like, forgot all about those until just now. Oh, my God. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to do a hot um, Patreon episode about bubble pies. But before then, before then, what are we doing next week? What is the hot episode um, that we are dipping into next week on the podcast? Oh! Oh, 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 I know what it is, and I don't even have to look it up. We are diving into a show we have talked about. Yes. Like, we have never really watched it. Like, I think if I ever watched it, I watched this episode. Oh, yeah. It is a late 90s CBS sitcom. And who does this star? Who does this star? Starring Bob Newhart. Oh, yeah. And Jen Hirsch. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can't wait. So we're doing an episode of a one season wonder right is this is a one season wonder it's a one season wonder all right what's it called what's it called <laughs> george and leo so join us next week when we talk about george and leo and before that before that where can you follow adventures can also the other where can you follow us you can follow us on twitter at very podcast you can follow us on instagram facebook tumblr at a very special podcast do not accept imitation oh no oh no because really who wants fake lasagna uh i mean stouffer's is okay sometimes um you can find us on pretty much any podcast listening app amazon iheart spotify itunes youtube podcast addict like whatever you listen you found us so follow subscribe listen to more of our insanity don't forget about the patreon motherfucker don't forget about the patreon if you have a patreon though i'm sure patrick calling you a motherfucker really makes you want to like support us i don't know i mean if someone called me a motherfucker i'd be like take my money take my money (laughs) that's the difference between you and me yeah you know what well, it, it's an experiment. It, it's, it's an experiment. And, I, mm-hmm. and as always, as always, Carol. Bye! Watch the skies for the flash in the, in the sky. Or, hold on, until next time. Oh.
Well, thanks.